Hello everybody, and welcome to the Week 1 Tag Team Battle League Power Rankings uh, video for this week, and you're here with Coach Oak, um, but this is not done solely by myself, um, just the recording will be. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. So this is our format. We've got a master list of the what the actual power rankings are, and I'll we'll go through them, explaining kind of why teams are where they're at, um, with some notes from uh, myself and just general notes, and then we'll go through more quickly, of course, three individual lists from Coach Oak, Nick Ninja, and a W0211 to show how we got to the master list, which is an average of all of our rankings, as well as... Um, going through some of our more specific notes from each match there as well. And let's get started. So, starting with team number 12, we've got Team Speeds. We've got, they are 0-1 with a negative 4 differential. This was the biggest loss, the biggest differential match of week 1. However, that's not solely why they are 12th. Mainly they are 12th because they did not bring near enough from you and Suicune. Those are the two bulkiest things that they were going against this week on Team New Wave, and they didn't really prepare to break those, and it cost them dearly. There's not too much else to say in terms of general notes for that note. So, let's move on. They just got bodied. If they... All they need to do is just do a little better prep and they'll be fine. Uh, we'll see where they go from here. This is just a starting point. Number 11 is Team No Mercies. Now we had a lot of 3-0 games this week. Uh, we have Team No Mercies ranked as the bottom of those. Um, as they are 0-1 with the negative 3 differential. They were against Team Sacks. This is Rain versus Trick Room. If Trick Room goes up, Trick Room's going to win. That's about it. Uh, they really brought nothing to counter the Trick Room uh, option that Team Sacks had, and they had multiple ways of setting it up with Kecleon and Hoopa. And by not countering that, you were going hyperspeed with Rain versus Tail versus Bulky Trick Room. You're not winning that match. I'm sorry. Um, something like... Slowbro brought with its Mega Stone, of course, because it ha is Mega Slowbro, but not Mega -ing. Just having Trick Room and sticking with Regen and or Oblivious or whatever would have probably been better um, to stick on that team rather than Mandibuzz. I know Mandibuzz could have done things, but it got froze. But oh well, uh, it was unfortunate. Not necessarily necessary to the outcome of the match, but yeah. So. Team No Mercies needs to bring a little more balance, or any team with a Trick Room mode could just take advantage against their Rain. And yeah, let's move on to Team 505, which is our 10th ranked in the Power Rankings once again, 0-1, with a negative 3 differential. So, they were against Team Hacks this week in our first match in the Tag Team Battle League. So, hype to them. Um, first off, Gigalith ending with a boom. Great. Loved it. Um, we're going to win it. Might as well see if you can get a kill with Explosion and just fun all around for everyone involved. So, I like that. Um, this was a Sand Spam type team. But it kind of couldn't... Earthquake freely, because there's no flying type except for pre-mega Gyarados, which is unfortunate. They might want to look into picking up flying or a levitator um, at some point to pair with these. And, because I mean, even mega Gyarados kind of wants to spam your earthquake, but it kind of can't. And yeah, they, they went down to a good lead combo. And the Watarium Z took out in Incineroar right off the bat. And it just kind of, they were in a good spot from there. And again, 
something like tectonic rage or a single target ground type move would have been probably better for red steel uh, red steel kind of bodied them a little bit in this match with some offense as well uh, you got to be ready for hidden power fire attacks when you've got a kartana Reggie Steel Hidden Power Fire is enough to kill a Kartana because it has no spadef and it's four times weak. So be aware, be ready for that Hidden Power attack, find where you think it might be. Reggie Steel was a somewhat obvious but really good place for Team Hacks to put it, but we'll talk about that more later. Um, yeah, I really just feel like they were leaning on Gigalith a whole lot and didn't switch it out after it got intimidated, so it leaning on it didn't help too much when it was intimidated by Mega Manectric. So, unfortunately, you probably could have played that a little bit better as Gigalith was your win con. Letting it be intimidated isn't and stick around isn't probably the, the best idea when the stuff you had in the back weren't really going to do as much. But let's move on to team number nine. Team Real Beauties, who play Team Badoof this week. And again, 03 loss for Team Real Beauties. The start was really, really good for Team Real Beauties, and they showed a lot of potential here, which is why they're ahead of some of the other 03 teams. They played around the Garchomp really well. Um, they played around the fake-out pressure on Token Navarro really well. It was... It's a tough matchup for them, and... They played really well, but weren't able to kind of finish it off as Team Padoof really did have the matchup and just kind of took over once they got going, um, which it is what it is. If you don't have the matchup, you don't have the matchup. Uh, maybe someone disagrees with me about whether they have the matchup or not, but well, you can comment down below if you want to for that. Let's move on to our next page. Team number 8 is Team PR Echo, 0 and 1 with a negative 2 differential. And then Team Frozen Helix, 0 and 1 with a negative 1 differential. Yes, our average rankings all ended up being kind of the um, you win, you go up, you lose, you go down differential base, but there, our individual lists have much more variance in this, side, this part of the bracket. Uh, team BC uh, it was 1 and 0 with a plus 2 differential playing Team PR Echo. And Team Fire Rising is 1-0 with a plus-1 differential playing Team Frozen Helix. So these are two matches we'll talk about. Let's talk about PR Echo versus uh, BC first. Um, this was the one that had timer, but we're just going to pretend that didn't happen for the sake of this video. Uh, Team BC needs to learn what Skydrop does. This is doubles format. Skydrop will be a thing. Learn the mechanics. This Since another match in Week 2 has gone off where someone didn't know the mechanics as well, Everyone, please go look up the mechanics of Skydrop. Figure out what... It's hard to memorize which mods are all too heavy to lift. That's the hardest part, but at least have an idea and understand the mechanics outside of that. What it affects, what just it picks up, what it doesn't pick up, how the turn work, turn mechanics work. Like, let's go all look up Skydrop. This is a doubles league. We, we need to get this figured out. Um... And they did a really good job of preserving differential at the day, but it was a very haxy match, and yeah, so PR Echo kind of just got haxed out, and it's unfortunate for them, but that's why they're going to end up at number 8, because they do have a loss with negative 2 differential, um, but some very big positives come out of this match for them. The countering of the Drift Blim Lele lead was just marvelous. Um, Z heal block was really nice to learn about. That's something that we I didn't know existed. Um, well, I mean, I knew it existed. I didn't know what it did. So that's cool. Um, Gothitel getting the boost is nice. Uh, the Psychic Seed on Halucha was really nice. Um, or no, was that that was the other team? I'm mixing my teams in this match. Uh, the countering of the lead was really good. I didn't write down what the leads actually were. I know it was Gothitelle and something with a seed. I don't remember, but something with a psychic seed. 
Um, yeah, Halucha. Yeah, Halucha, because it was uh, Drift Van Lele versus Gothitelle and Halucha, which seems like a bad match for Halucha, but they played around it so well when the Umburden um, Halucha, and that was then Skydrop, just countering a very, very strong Drift Van Lele lead is something you go you're going to have to do when you play um, Team BC. You have to be prepared for that lead, and they did an amazing job of that. Um, there was a crit on the Gyarados. I don't know if it mattered, but I'm assuming, based on the way they were talking about it, that uh, they had the EVs to live. That Thunderbolt from Magmortar. Or Magmar. Magmortar. Um, they faced each other in this match. And, wow, I'm getting really confused about this match. I probably should watch it one more time, even though I'm looking at my notes. I don't have all the details here uh, with me. That's what you get when I do this for free. And my question uh, for PR Echo, and they can comment in Discord or whatever. For, did Magmar not have follow me? Because I feel like it could have really helped out in some of the the reads down the stretch that hurt them out. Um, yeah, I, I kind of want to know if Magmar had followed me, but they don't have to let me know. But if they do, that's awesome. I think it would have helped you out in pulling this game back, but at the end of the day, you got hacked out. I was really impressed, and I look forward to big things from this team. You will bounce back from the one loss, I'm sure. Uh, I think that's all we have to say about Team BC and Team PR Echo, and we're going to move on to the match between Team Fire Rising, coached by myself and Honor, and... Um, so I am a little bit biased, just stating that right at the top, and Team Frozen Helix. Um, this was a match where Frozen Helix absolutely destroyed off the start. Agron Shiftry as a lead were kind of two things that were obviously not prepped for enough. Um, and while they did a good job of making sure to um, fake out Shiftry, who had fake out, to get up Tailwind with Star Raptor, who had enough bulk to live, head smash Agron. They let Shift Free pick up two kills when it was complete, just support, and it took an item, and Shift Free caused problems, which is a sign that there wasn't enough prep. Uh, there was some signs of really good prep on this, this part of Fire Rising. Um, Natural Gift, Gendlon Berry is cool, but Blaziken really needed to be in Tailwind. I know they said they had some legality issues, which is... Well, we said we had some legality issues, which is true. We didn't really hit validate until the we were about to go into battle. So we found out we couldn't do speed boost natural gift, which is unfortunate. Uh, that would have been really helpful against Zygarde and posturing and whatnot. But it is what it is. And uh, for Frozen Helix specifically... I, I think you might have thought this match was over a little too soon, even though it could have been. Yes, there was a misclick slash misplay slash whatever where you should have had smashed Kiram White. Um, you know that there, there's not nothing to beat that down. But when you were when you were up five to two, <laughs> asking about if the match was going on YouTube and saying you wanted to see what we were thinking and all this, you might have been thinking a little too much ahead of yourself and not just focused on. Finish your match. In doubles, a good pairing of two can run through five months. That's how it is. Um, there was still Kiram White, the number four pick in the draft, to be aware of. Don't think too far ahead. Focus on getting the win, then talk about YouTube. Um, but yeah. Also, another thing, don't forget about Z-Moves. Uh, if you hadn't seen one yet, you should probably just assume it's in the last pairing. Uh, for this league format, that's, I know that's what kind of we're doing. Uh, if you don't see it, you assume it's at the end because either that mon got taken out too quick to use it, or um, which is great, but there's a good chance of something you're not expecting coming. Don't go put too much into assuming a life orb item that you haven't seen on Kirim. Um, but yeah, Team Frozen Helix, they were number one in the power rankings for pre-draft. They've got a great team. They played very well for the most part. They showed off the the 
least threatening mons on their team very well in Agron and Shiftry, except for that one play, but uh, Shiftry picked up two kills as a support mon, so that's always good to see. They're going to do some things in this league for sure. Be ready to see them move forward. Team Fire Rising, play better at the start, don't leave it for the end. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about us. So let's move on to our top four. We've got Team Hacks, who took on Team 505. As I said before, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, they had some good prep, uh, some good play right off the start. One really bad play that's kind of hurting them a little bit is you've got a Mega Manectric with 1% or 2%, something like that, health left in sand. And you were just protected. Could have cycled it out to get the Intimidate back. You could have just put damage down on that Gigalith, which was the other team's win con at the time. But you just protected it and let it go down. Like, yes, there was an Earthquake incoming. That was obvious. There was there was all four haunts on the on the field were weak to Earthquake. But um, Gigalith was going to throw off an Earthquake there. Nighthigh was going to protect. Uh, you protected with Mega Manetric and... Reggie Steel, I think it was my side. I'm not entirely sure, but it was another Mon Week to Earthquake. Um, and just protecting to let it go down to sand was not the best play, but uh, other than that, I can't really take too much in terms of um, to fault this team. But it was, it was against a team who got ranked a little bit lower. Well, it was a good 3 0 win. Um, they're coming from the bottom of the team rankings, so we'll see. Let them prove it again next week and see where they go from there in terms of power rankings. At number three, we have Team Badoof. So, they played Real Beauties, as we talked about earlier. Sharpedo versus Sharpedo in this match was very fun, by the way. It's just a side note. Um, team Badoof really did a good job of playing a little unconventionally in terms of they had Ice Fang with a speed boosted Mega Sharpedo in for a while, but they didn't go after Sceptile. They kind of left it knowing they had other things to do with it and attacked around it and took out the partners for Mega Sceptile, even though it is a big threat. I thought that was a really good play in terms of unconventional and kind of reading into um, everything else, knowing you had other things that you could deal with Mega Sceptile as well. Um, you did a really good job of recovering. There was no evidence to tilt. So, very strong job. You took your match up and um, played it out really well to the finish. Got the good 3-0. Uh, let's see what you do from here. And we'll see how you do in the rankings. So, Team Sacks uh, is our top of the 3-0 winners this week. Um, after they beat... I forget all who played who all the time. Sacks beat No Mercies. Um, with the Trick Room versus the Rain, it was really good prep. Um, leading Tangrowth and Hoopa is a really good lead because Tangrowth puts so much pressure into that Rain team that there's a very strong possibility they have to double into Tangrowth and a very strong possibility they have to double into Hoopa knowing Trick Room's coming and it kind of leads in a screwed if you do, screwed if you don't scenario, and if the other team doesn't double into one of them, which they didn't, you pretty well just auto win, um, as you've got all the momentum and all the offense as well. So, good job Team Sacks, your prep was phenomenal and you played it out pretty well. Um, the one thing I would say is you can play for differential better at the end than you did. So this could have been more than a 3-0 if you had just, you know, gotten Tapu Fini out of the way of the sludge bomb that was incoming, which you, was pretty obvious was incoming. You had some full health things. You, you, could have, you could have played for differential a little better, but if that's my only complaint, you did a good job, which is why you're team number two in the power rankings for this week. Good luck going forward. And new to the power rankings, new to the league after the draft, drafting from leftovers, and new to the number one slot is Team New Wave. Uh, Team New Wave did an amazing job in terms of prep. I don't even think we saw every Mon. Uh, they won 
Mew and Suicune just absolutely bodied here. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know. You probably could have turned this into a 6-0, again, the differential thing. But uh, you took a really solid 4 win. Good job. This was a great team build from Leftovers. If in, if it had been there during the pre draft power rankings, I personally would have put it at 5th. Um, so just take that into note. Um, it is a very strong team with some very big threats and some bulk to support them. And yeah, you showed off why Mew is good in doubles. You showed off why Suicune is good in doubles. You showed off why you guys are good at doubles. So great job. Um, yes, the opponent didn't bring enough for them, but it was a really good play, and I look forward to seeing what you can do going forward, and I hope I don't play you till much later in the season. I haven't looked at the schedule lately. So, that's it for your power rankings. So, just a refresher here. We got Team Speeds, Team No Mercies, Team 505, Team Real Beauties, Team Pure Echo, Team Frozen Helix, Team BC, Team Fire Rising, Team Hacks, Team Badoof, Team Sax, and Team New Wave topping us off this week. Uh, with obviously, it's week one. There's going to be lots of movement in this as matches go forward. Let's go into the individual list now. Uh, this is the list from Nith Ninja. Uh, I don't have notes from him yet, so I'll just run through it real quick and show what's a little bit different. Um, he has PR Echo ahead of BC, even though BC won that match. Um, as I said, I was very impressed with PR Echo, and there was some hacks involved and whatnot, so it makes sense to have those two right together at the end. Uh, he does have Team Fire Rising ahead of Team Frozen Helix with a 1-0 win. Um, kind of sandwiching those other ones. Basically, I think the team, top four are the same and the bottom four are the same as the um, master list. So, AW's list. Uh, he has Team Frozen Helix ahead of Team Fire Rising um, in the power ranks despite Team Fire Rising winning. Um, because of the misplay slash misclick at the um, at the end there, where Agron head smashed into Blastoise instead of Karam White, uh, he does have Team BC much ahead of PR Echo, who he has at ninth. Uh, he's got Real Beauties taking a spot away from PR Echo into that middle portion of the group. And other than that, I believe we are the same at the top and the same at the bottom as well. Uh, some notes uh, here. He says the mana buzz freeze was unfortunate but not game changing. Uh, he really likes the strategy from Real Beauties of Thundee T and Mega Sceptile uh, with the T wave and gives Real Beauties a lot of points for that. Gives Bidoof a lot of credit for controlling the game with speed control. Uh, BC PR Echo praises the Psychic Seeds on both teams as good prep, which it was. Um, it says Natural Gift is a great gimmick strategy, unfortunately it didn't work for Team Fire Rising. And says that match could have been a 3-0 or 2-0 win for Frozen Helix without the misclick. They played perfectly outside of one turn. He says that Mew's set was disgusting. Fake out Icy Wind, Tailwind, and will o -Wisp, of course, uh, which it was. Mew was just ugly this week, and I look forward to seeing that in a more offensive role some other weeks as well. Um, but yeah. Not sure why it was Psycho Cut over Zen Headbutt on Mega Metacham. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. Um, yeah, why not Zen Headbutt? So leave a comment down below, Team Speeds. Let us know why. And he gives credit to Team Sax for stalling out the rain with Protect. It says No Mercies could have done better at stalling out the Trick Room. And again, comments on why did Mega Manectric Protect when it died to stand instead of getting off damage. So there you go. There's your uh, notes from AW and AW's list. And my list, Coach Oak's list, in terms of the matches, has 
Uh, again, pretty well the same top and bottom as the others. We were fairly similar on those all across the board. Where we weren't sure was in the middle. Uh, Team Fire Rising, I have ahead of Team Frozen Helix, who I have above both members of Pierre Echo and Bascular Calente. See, I know I'm saying it wrong, that's why I say BC. Again, ahead of Pierre Echo and Team BC. Um, with the winner in Fire Rising being just ahead of Frozen Helix, and the winner BC being just below PR Echo because I was extremely impressed with team, how Team PR Echo played. And I thought the hacks was critical to the match. And I think if they go forward with the prep they had and in better situations, they're going to be uh, a force to reckon with. So just to go over these lists to get to the, the big list one quick time, just so you can take a look while I talk. Uh, from Nick Ninja, AW and Coach Oak. So this has been your week one power rankings. Um, I will leave some comments down below with any notes from Nick Ninja when he gives them to me. Since, um, so check the description for that if it's anything that needs to be in this video. But I wanted to get this up before work because I'm not going to have time tonight. And I know you guys are anxious waiting for these power rankings to be out. So I hope you enjoyed. And as we've got a new wave in the league, as Team New Wave has taken over number one after drafting from leftovers and look terrifying in the process. So I look forward to next week. Uh, hopefully this will be out much sooner next week for week two, as I know some matches are already done for that. But either way, here you go. Here's what was the deal after week one. And I look forward to seeing where everyone goes from here. Have a nice day, because Coach Oak said so. See you next time, everybody.